players, or how do you, how do you approach that? Well, we decided, you know, when we took this job, one of the things that we weren't going to do is try to reinvent the wheel, and I said that from day one. Uh, this is a team that has been very comfortable in the old, in the old system offensively, uh, and we feel like we can um, – have that still, but also bring in some of the things that we've done at some of our other stops and add to it. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we will tell you, though, is that uh, our, our focus is not just going to be on the offensive end. Our focus is going to be on the defensive end as well. Uh, and that's going to be an emphasis in practice and in games that we are able to defend and rebound the ball on the nights that uh, you know, our, 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 that our shots aren't falling. Did the circumstances around Kurt Miller's resignation give you any pause for coming here? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, I'm a Southern Indiana kid that played in the Big Ten, and um, you know, I've, we, I feel like in my career I've, I've, you know, I've been at several stops and uh, just kind of worked my way up to this opportunity and. Um, you know, the, the fact that uh, it is in the state of Indiana only ex made it more exciting for me that, uh, you know, I could stay in the state that I'm proud of, I grew up in, uh, you know, and be the, the new head coach here. At the same time, I guess, just how do you plan to handle such a quick transition? You talked about you've only been in for about a week and right. really been around this team for about a week. I mean, what's different about handling this upcoming season than it would be if you got the job in March or April? Well, you know, no, it's, it's just the, the challenge has been, which it's over now, was just getting my staff together. Um, you know, the timing of all this is normally turnover happens. Um, coaches are, are looking for, you know, jobs at the end of our season. Um, and that's kind of when that all that happens. And um, because of the fact that the timing of it, I got, you know, we were here in August um, and people pretty much had jobs. Um, that took me a little longer than probably it would have been, the, in, like I said, at the end of a, of a basketball season to really find the pieces that I needed to surround myself with in order to have a sound staff. Um, so that took a little bit longer. That was a little nerve-wracking for me. Uh, the other piece of it with the players was not that difficult. I mean, with, uh, with texting and being on the phone and just communicating with them um, and then spending time with them once they got on campus. Um, you know, this is a really great group of girls. Um, they they want to they wanna put the past behind and move forward. They made that very, very clear. Um, they're just excited about what the future holds for, for us. Did you have some familiarity with a lot of the players already? We did. You know, we've, we played them for the last two years at State, so we um, are very familiar uh, with them. And then, obviously, with the freshmen, you know, those are kids that we saw out on the recruiting circuit. So uh, we're familiar with them. Uh, but, again, it's just a matter of time before, you know, we can uh, – we, we have two, or two hours a week right now. September 15th, that all changes. We'll be on the floor as a team. So, um, you know, I'm not worried about that piece of it. I think that um, – I think that they like what they've seen so far in, in, in me and our staff in terms of how we've communicated, how we've uh, managed them on the floor. Uh, and I've been really happy just with the way they've showed up every day ready to go to work. The does first it help or does it, I guess that this is a young team. I mean, they, they, how much do you look at that as a positive? How much do you see it as an opposite? Well, I think it's really positive, especially when you're coming off the, the kind of season that they're coming off of. Uh, you know, they, they were able to accomplish that with young players. And... Uh, you know, you can't wait for your freshmen to become sophomores and your sophomores to become juniors. So um, I don't, I, it's not, I think if anything, it's, it's very positive. Um, and then you add the four pieces with those four freshmen uh, that were unbelievable high school players. Um, and uh, like I said, it's just, uh, it's, it just gets more exciting because now you're, you're able to, to lump them into the group too and, uh, you know, see what the potential is uh, with this team. When you get into the recruiting aspect in terms of what, what do you look for in a player, both from an athletic standpoint and maybe from a, you know, a character standpoint? Well, ca character to me is number one. Um, we want them to have high character. We want them to be really good in the classroom. Um, again, they make no bones about it. They're here to get their degree uh, from one of the, the greatest institutions in the country. Um, and so that's obviously a selling point right there, um, what we're going to be able to provide them from an educational standpoint. Certainly skill set, though, is important, you know, and it de depends on from year to year what you need, you know, what our needs are. Looking at our personnel, we're very guard heavy. Um, and so moving forward, we're going to have to, to really try to, to uh, fi find some post players, some fours and fives that can come in. Um, and uh, you know, play in this in this uh, in the Big Ten. That uh, to me is um, you know just kind of a grinded out big post players. Um, so we look a little bit different than a lot of those you know the, the Big Ten teams from a post standpoint. So we're going to have to really focus in on on improving that area. Take us back to the first time 
a former Purdue <coughs> player put on the cream and crimson. What was that like for you? That was, like you said, I, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, I just got the question yesterday about our, uh, about the football game with Indiana State. As I've always said, it doesn't matter, and I said this in the interview process, it doesn't matter where, you know, where I played and, and where I've coached. It only matters why I do this. And I do this for, you know, the impact that we have on the young lives of all these these kids, um, and also the, the 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 competition. I mean, what inspires us and me every day is the fact that we have a, we have a chance to do something special to to build a championship program, and that's been everywhere uh, I've ever been and ever coached. And so that's what excites me, inspires me. Um, I'm happy. I'm thrilled. This is a dream, you know. And I don't want to sound cliche-ish, but for a Southern Indiana kid that you know kind of grew up watching Bobby Knight and. Uh, Ted Kitchell and Steve Alford and you know all of that this is uh, like I said this is a, a dream come true for me and uh, you know quite frankly I hope uh, the goal is to make this a, a successful and uh, and this be Coach Warren's last stop you know I'd like to retire here and and at some point down the road um, you know uh, leave this place uh, in really good shape. Do you regret the way you had to leave Indiana State and continue going down a farm trip? I don't regret. You know, timing's never good in our profession. <coughs> it just never is. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I had full support from, from my players um, at State, uh, and they understand. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I think the, commu the communication part of it with our players will always be great. Um, they understand why, why we do what we do. And they also understand that, like, they have goals, we have goals as coaches. Um, and I, I've never tried to tell a kid, nor if I said to a kid, I'll be here for your four years. You just can't do that. Um, but I had tremendous support from Ron Purdyman, my Dan Bradley, and then my players. That was the most important thing. Yeah, could the timing been a little bit better? I wish it was, but uh, like I said, the timing is never good in what we do as a profession. Mm -hmm. At the same time, was that moment maybe kind of a reminder of just how tough or how different this is going to be again? Just coming in at this time of year, coming in, you know, having to leave your team that late in the summer. Well, you know, here's we don't give kids enough credit. You know, I think one of the things with young people is that they're resilient and they can normally adapt and move forward with a lot of different circumstances or challenges that are thrown at them. Um, and I, again, you know, our players in Indiana State have moved on. Uh, and I've seen plenty of pictures from the Costa Rica trip. I mean, they were having a blast. They weren't missing Coach Morin at the time. Um, and so our players, you know, like I said, they've, they've really uh, it, it just let's move on. Let's move on. And, uh, you know, we can't control what's happened in the past. All we can do is control what's ahead of us today. And that's really been our mantra that we just focus on every day uh, trying to become, you know, better, better players.